Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 40 of Radio Free Filler. Well, we're getting closer to springtime, but it isn't here yet. Maybe this is a good time to pause and reflect with a thoughtful poem from our very own poet, Lariat. Wait, that can't be right. Shouldn't it be Poet Laureate? Actually, in the case of this guest, the text is correct as written. Poet Lariat. How's that? Well, it seems like he started off by reciting in a Wild West show. That doesn't make sense. What would a poet be doing in a Wild West show? Apparently getting yanked off the stage. (laughs) So they gave him the old hook. Kind of, only in that setting they used a rope. Hence the term... Poet Lariat. I guess it figures... Well, let's bring him on anyway. In keeping with the uncertain time of year in which we find ourselves, I shall now recite my poem, which I call Rumination. Rumination. It seems to me that the life of a crocus is a bit like the life of a 17-year locus, though nowadays folks like to call them cicadas, well, some say tomatas and some say tomatoes. Whatever you call them, they both wait a while, then emerge from the ground with what must be a smile only to meet with some unhappy fate, like snow, hail, or ice, or not finding a mate. It is true that crocuses don't wait as long, but that doesn't make the thing any less wrong. To come up bursting forth only to freeze, or to die with your shell stuck to somebody's trees. And it leads me to ponder my personal fate when I'm either too early or else I'm too late. Or the worst luck of all to befall an old poet to be right on time but not even know it. Well, I bet the locusts and crocuses will appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. I shall depart now. What's your hurry? I see a familiar-looking fellow in the wings, and he's coiling a rope. (laughs) Looks like even now he was just a little bit too slow. Oh, well. Pardon me, but we must interrupt with a special announcement. Probably just as well. Yes, we have a warning for the public about a new online video. Oh dear, this sounds serious. Can we skip it? Of course not. Why would you want to skip a serious announcement? This is supposed to be a comedy show. (laughs) Well, I'm afraid we'll have to take our chances because the public needs to know. This newest online video is intended, purported, to promote something that calls itself a male enhancement product. However, the video goes so far as to claim effectiveness even on such unexpected objects as bowling balls, rubber bands, and various kitchen utensils. The list goes on and on. Wouldn't most people just realize how ridiculous it was and just switch the thing off? 
One of the most insidious effects of the video is its apparent ability to suspend the intelligent judgment of the viewer. Worse yet, most viewers feel compelled to forward this video to friends, relatives, and even complete strangers. So the thing has gone viral? Worse than that, the content seems to intensify with each forward. You could even say it's gone viral. <laughs> well, does the video call for viewers to send money? No, it just wastes time. So, how much time would the video actually end up wasting? That's the biggest problem. Each instance of the video lasts for more than four hours. <laughs> more than four hours? That's time to call the doctor. Let's bring on our next guest, Dr. Andy Whiney. Thank you. Friends, do you suffer from dry mouth, nausea, and constipation? No. Actually, I kind of enjoy them. <laughs> now, as I was saying, for the rest of you, how about headaches, bruising, or muscle soreness? How about nosebleeds, itching, or blood clots? Do you mind if I sit down? <laughs> Go right ahead and stop worrying, because I've got the answer to all those problems. These things are all common side effects of the products you see advertised on late night TV. You gotta wonder why so few of them mention insomnia. Well, anyway... Here's my solution. Stop taking all those medications and make the switch to an old standby that's been around for years and years. Yes, folks, you guessed it. You didn't guess it? Well, that's probably due to brain fog, which is another side effect. I'll have to come out and tell you. The product I'm talking about is that long-standing favorite among scientists, placebo. The great thing about placebo is that it almost never has any side effects except that sometimes the patients say they feel a little better. The other great thing about placebo is that it's been tested more often than any of those other remedies. It's even got its own special scientific term, the placebo effect. So throw away all those other so-called cures. The side effects are probably more of a hassle than the original problem was anyway. And switch to placebo, the standard against which all other medicines are measured. Thank you, Dr. Andy Whiney. It's nice to finally get a real medical message from you. Attention, attention. And another thing, folks. Did you ever notice how all the survivors just keep getting older? Attention, attention, I demand to be heard. Well, thank you, Dr. Andy Whiney. Now it's time for a brand new feature that we call Advice for the Incredibly Wealthy, featuring the well-known expert, Dr. Joyce Bothers. Well, it's about time. I have other places I could be, you know. Sorry to keep you waiting. The time will be added to my fee. Well, I guess we'd better get started. Indeed. I have graciously and reluctantly agreed to take time out of my very busy, very important schedule to offer a small fraction of my great wisdom for the very small portion of the population whom I deem worthy to hear it. As stated previously, I am here to provide advice for the incredibly wealthy. Let us begin. The first question. One of the chairs in the dining room of my third mansion is six inches out of position, and it bothers me when I see it on the in-house monitor. What shall I do? The answer is, have your butler take care of it. <laughs> the second question. There seems to be a dandelion growing in the rough 
near the eleventh hole of my golf course. What shall I do? My answer is, have your gardener take care of it. <laughs> Another question. My slippers have slid under the bed and I don't feel like crawling down there to retrieve them. What shall I do? My answer, have your maid take care of it. <laughs> Another question. Oh, this is a continuation. My maid has been called out of town on a family emergency and won't be back until tomorrow. My answer is simple. Have your other maid take care of it. <laughs> the next question. My second Rolls Royce is due for inspection and I don't go outside when the chance of rain exceeds 5% for the day. What shall I do? The answer, have your driver take care of it. <laughs> Another question. I suffer from feelings of excessive entitlement because I have so much when so many others in the world have so little, what shall I do? I'm afraid that's all the time I have today. I have so many much more important things to attend to. I turn the program back over to you, Robert. Thank you, Dr. Joyce Bothers. I'm sure all our other listeners enjoyed your appearance as well. What other listeners? Oh, never mind. Ta-ta. Dr. Joyce bothers everybody. Wasn't she... Boy, she sure did leave in a hurry. Anyway, now it's time for another new feature. Some of you may remember some reality TV shows in which volunteers were asked to live for several weeks in a simulation of a lifestyle from many years in the past. First, there was 1900 House, in which a family suffered through a life of primitive appliances, obsolete fashions, and limited entertainment until one member finally broke down and bought some modern shampoo. <laughs> Later, there was Frontier House, in which a family lived under even more primitive conditions until one of them found a discarded set of box springs somewhere just off the set. <laughs> then there was Texas Ranch House, in which a family got dragged into the deal by one member who decided to change the rules completely. Well, now we have a new experimental concept. Instead of looking back into the past, we're going to put our volunteer family into the world of the future. Now you may ask, how can we possibly simulate a future that we can't predict? Well, we're just going to be careful about it, that's all. So now it's time for that newest reality show, One Hour in the Future House. What? What's going on? Oh, nuts, I'm going to be late again. Well, that's the way it goes. The handyman came by to repair the clock, but you were still asleep, so we left already. What handyman? We may be in the future, but no handyman is going to make a house call just to fix an alarm clock. <laughs> you don't know that, dear. No, I guess not. I guess I'll just have to eat breakfast at the office. Bye now. Oh dear, I forgot to tell him that the boss wants to meet at a different branch today. Oh well. The car's gone. Oh yes, I forgot to tell you. Junior's borrowed it today. You'll have to take the bus. But he won't get his license for another six months. No dear, he's already got it. You slept through something else this morning. The TV producer came by and changed the show to One Year in the Future House. <laughs> one year? What am I supposed to do now? Well, as long as you're here, you might want to make out a check for the overdue tax bill. What? What? With penalty and interest. This is outrageous. How am I supposed to function when I gotta catch up for a whole year? I don't know, but you better brush your teeth and use some mouthwash before you go meet anyone. I can't take this anymore. I'm gonna go insane. 
And that's as far as we got with this particular program. Be sure to tune in again next time for I'm Going to Go Insane House. That was for all the people who struggle with daylight savings time. Well, we've had our fun with our victims. I mean, volunteers. But now we'd like to offer another different look at the nature of time. It's called Another Place and Time. Another place and time We might see things differently It might be sublime If you were born the night before And I was born in the house next door Maybe we'd have something left to say If we both were born In another time and place That's a nice note on which to end our little show. Unfortunately, the producer says we need another few minutes. So, here's another song. It's another look at the concept of time, but this one's kind of up-tempo and ragged and, well, dystopian like some of the kids like these days. 
Oh well, so much for our nice little mood. That's what happened to that one. It was our first show in what I like to think of as season four. Anyway, tune in again next time for another episode of Radio Free Filler. <laughs>